Do you know what to do after your spring crops are done and you have extra space in the garden? Keep watching, I'm gonna to talk to you about succession planting. Hello everyone, this is Audra with Magnolia Street Garden and today I want to talk to you about succession planting, which means when your spring crops are done, you don't have to just um, leave that space empty in your garden. You can actually continue planting, even in the middle of the summer, a new set of crops and um, continue harvesting. So today I'm going to talk to you about succession planting for beets and peas and um, cucumbers and some other things. So here's how I do it. So these are the peas I'm gonna take out. These were King Tut purple peas. And as you can see, they're kind of dying off at the bottom and they're not producing really hardly any anymore. And they've got some kind of, I guess, powdery mildew. And this happens every year. Peas just don't do well when it starts getting hot. So I'm gonna take those out and I'm gonna plant green beans right there. And it is June 22, and it is still plenty of time in our growing zone to have a whole nother crop. In this bed, um, I have some celery growing and kohlrabi, and that's about it. So I'm about to harvest these kohlrabi, and then I'm going to fill this bed up with a second round of beets. I actually have beets going already in this bed, but as you can see, they are about ready to be harvested. So I'm gonna harvest all of these. And in this bed, I'm going to put a second round of summer squash. So this is another set of peas on this trellis that are hanging on a little better than the others, but they won't be long either until, I'm gonna pull those out. And I'm gonna put in a second round of cucumbers on this trellis. The thing I succession plant is lettuce and this is my first round of lettuce and you can see it is huge and um, it's probably going to get picked today, the last of it. And so that's going to get torn out and I'll show you what I do with lettuce next. So now that summer's in full swing and bugs are a serious problem, I put my lettuce in hanging baskets. So there's one and here's my second one. These are further along. And then I have a third hanging basket of lettuce that's a little bit smaller. So that'll let me um, harvest this kind of in waves. So I plant beets right down in front of my tomato cages. So here's my tomato cages. And then down I have this like six inch space down here where I plant beets. And um, some of them are not quite ready yet, like these. And then some of them I have harvested already, like you can see this bare space. But after I harvest them, I come back in and you can see um, the seeds are already coming up. So this is my second round of beets. And these still have plenty of time to grow before these tomatoes get too big and completely shade them out too much. Which beets can kind of handle that a little bit, so it kind of works. They have a nice little relationship here, the beets and the tomatoes. All right, so here's this side of the trellis all cleared out. This is where the peas were, those really sorry looking peas. And when I cleared out down here, I found these two little friends. I'm pretty sure these are Chinese python snake beans, which I grew on this trellis last year. And I'm actually super excited about that because when I grew them last year, a lot of people asked me for seeds and I didn't save a single one. So that'll be great. I'll be able to get some for seeds. And I actually found over here, I didn't know what this was until I was trying to help him up the fence the other day. And I leaned over and sniffed him and I was like, yep, that's a python bean too. So it's like I'll have three plants. Anyway, now I am going to sow the green bean seeds in, in there.
now that I have the green beans planted right there along the edge of the trellis, I'm going to fill in all this extra space here with golden beets that I got from Baker Creek Seed Company. This <clears throat> that I have growing in here is uh, celery, so I'm going to kind of avoid that. And then I have these kohlrabis down here, which are about ready to harvest, some of them at least, so those will be coming out soon and I can fill in the whole rest of this bed with beets. And we eat a lot of beets, so um, no problem on that. probably tell how fluffy this soil is and it's even fluffier down here. I use a lot of leaf mulch and potting mix so it's super fluffy and great for growing beets. So here's the finished product. I did harvest a few of those kohlrabis and clear out some room on the end here where I made, I put one row of beets and then the rest of this I put like about four or five rows, some of them partial because I had to avoid the celery. And disclaimer, I did originally plant this celery in three rows and you can kind of see the remnants of one, two, three rows but as soon as I planted it the squirrels came and did what they do <laughs> and this is what I have left anyway I'm gonna give it a good watering in now I'd love to hear what you guys do for your succession planting so leave me a comment below and don't forget to subscribe for more great videos see you next time